Once upon a time, there were two little engines who lived on a small railway up in the mountains. Duke was an old engine who was named after the Duke of Sodor, and it was his job to take passengers up and down the mountains to the mountain villages. The other was named Smudger. He was given that name because he would frequently derail and smudge his paintwork. He was an American engine who had a large wheelbase that didn't cope well on the sharp bends of the railway. When he arrived, he tried to be careful, but no matter what he did, he would derail somewhere almost every day. Eventually, Smudger stopped trying to avoid it. Smudger derailed so often that one day, the manager threatened to remove his wheels and turn them into a generator. You had better handle yourself better on the line, Smudger. Manager is threatening to take away your wheels. Listen, Dookie. I ride just fine. It's the tracks that are the problem. I cannot help if I derail every now and then. I do my best to stay trackside if you get my meaning. If by that you mean your wheels on the track side, then I understand, and that would never suit his grace. Smudger just rolled his eyes and puffed off. However, later that day at the big station, Smudger thought about what Duke had said. Ah, Duke's old square wheels. Even if I were to be punished for another derailment, it wouldn't take off my wheels. It would hurt the railway more than me. Now, Smudger, I know that you have been causing many problems on my railway, and I will be having none of it. However, I am going to offer you a final chance to prove you are a useful engine. On the other end of the yard, there is a train intended for Osborough Harbor. Take the train there on time, and on the tracks, can I trust you? Yes, sir, I will take that train. Be there and back in a jiffy. That's a good engine. It is a train of slate that is to be loaded onto a boat by three o'clock. Take the train, slowly and carefully. Don't you worry, sir. Remember, Smudger, this is your last chance. The journey up wasn't that rough. Smudger went slowly, making good time. He was getting close to the harbor when he came upon a bump in the line. By the time he noticed it, it was too late. Uh, oh no, I've derailed. What will the manager say? Soon Duke arrived with the breakdown train to reroute Smudger. On board was the manager, and he had some stern words for Smudger. That train was your last chance at proving yourself, Smudger. I'm sorry, sir. I swear I was being careful. Let me try again. I swear you will not be disappointed. After all, it was a damaged track. I, I wasn't being reckless. I'm done with your excuses, Smudger. We will have to repair the tracks now. Ever since you arrived, you have done nothing but cost the railway money. We will take away your wheels and make you into something really useful. A generator. What? No. Sir, please. I wasn't being reckless. It's a bumpy track. Tell him, Dookie. 
I would support you, Smudger. But I think we both know what really happened. Nobody will want you. Your damaged goods. I would sell you for scrap, but it would cost me more than you're worth to move you. That's for sure. Maybe someone's finally come to rescue me. Hey!
but what was that? Yeah, maybe I'm just losing my smoke box. I have been here a long time. Maybe I just need sleep. It is late after all. This could just be a bad dream. So, um, are you alive? you can talk. If you are scared, you don't have to fear me. Ollie, tell us it's not safe. I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's no one around here who I can tell if I wanted to. Since we're alone, there is nobody else who I can talk to. So we're both stuck here. Why? Because this place is long abandoned. The surrounding villages and people have moved on. And I haven't seen a person in decades. At least ten years. Why? Not by choice. What about you? Really? Maybe I am just losing my mind. This is a dream. It, it can't be real. You are dreaming. You said it is real. Who are you? A prisoner. Why? Hello? Ow. We found him. We found our sleeping beauty. Uh, hello? Is anyone there? No, quite. Oh, would you look at that, lads? We have another one over here. Yeah, who are you? Did you come looking for me? We came looking for an engine, but we are sure Mr. Percival and Mr. Normby would be pleased to recover you as well. Yeah, oh, thank you, sir. So who'd you come looking for? I remember an engine named John. No, it was an old engine named Duke. Did you know him? Eh, not much. We will have you out tomorrow. We didn't expect we would need another truck. Sir Normby is making the arrangements. We can rely on him to get things done. Is there anything we need to know before we get started tomorrow? Um, no. But if I could meet this Mr. Normby, that would be very swell. Sounds fair. What are you doing? What I can. Trust me. Hello there, my splendid fellow. Greetings, sir. My name is Smudger. Nice to meet you, my dear boy. How may I help you? Well, you see, I have this old mirror. It was a gift from an old acquaintance, and I am afraid it may be damaged or lost in the recovery. So I was wondering if you could hold on to it until I have been settled into my new home. Everyone here has told me that, uh, about how reliable you are. So, I thought I might ask. Of course, my friend. I would love to keep an artifact such as this safe for you. Furthermore, I will have it dusted and cleaned while you are restored.
Yeah. Hello? Someone there? Only a messenger. Oh? How so? I have come to warn you that the mirror is dangerous, but in need. Your decision was wise, but you may not always be surrounded by those of such a character. For there are those who seek such an object with noble and evil intent in their heart. Judge wisely who you can trust, and be strong. Have faith, and deliverance shall come. Um, thank you. But how did you know? Hey, hello? Hello there. Uh, hi. New arrival, I see. Are you excited? Well, I'm happy to have my wheels back, but I'm scared of messing up again. Well, why is that? I was turned into a generator because I kept derailing. Were you causing it or was it out of your control? I couldn't help it. Mad tracks. Couldn't work well. Of course, I stopped caring after a while. I can understand that. Before I came here, I was a repair truck. I would go around and fix tracks. However, I was too heavy and would not be able to fix old bridges. A manager was allowed to sell me for scrap. But then I was bought and came here. Now I take good trains and do shunting. Sometimes it's not being a bad fit for the railway, but being a bad fit for the job. Like a square peg in a round hole. Take Derek over there. He used to break down constantly, but then Sir Topham put him on the flatter sections of track, and he hasn't broken down since. Take it from me. On this railway, you will find a home. Thank you, Stanley. That helps me feel better. Is that that blue engine on the billboard? No, that's Scott. Gordon was the old express engine. Yeah, what happened to Gordon? Sad story. A few years back, a storm hit the island and wrecked it. Gordon was one of the engines sent to repair the line through the forest. He and another engine went missing a few days later and were never found. I wouldn't bring it up around the big engines. All right, Stanley. Off you go. I'm sorry, but I must go now. What was your name? It's Smudger. What about you? Stanley. It was nice to meet you, Smudger. Hello there, I'm Mr. Percival, your new controller. You'll be starting work first thing in the morning. Thank you, sir. I'm very anxious. How so? Well, I wasn't exactly built for rough and winding tracks. It caused me many problems on my old railway. That won't be a problem. The tracks are well maintained, and I have you on some of our less demanding lines. Oh, thank you, sir. 
You're welcome. I just came to welcome you to the railway. Oh, and before I go, we will need a name for your christening tomorrow morning. Are there any you have in mind? Hmm... Stanley. Hello there. Who might you be? Stanley. I've been looking forward to meeting you. So have I. Another engine on the railway is always welcome. Enough with the introductions. There's a siding waiting for you just down the line. Okay. Thank you, Skylar. Nice meeting you. You're welcome, Stanley. You too. Do you know which side I'm supposed to leave these trucks in? Oh, so now it's my job to know every work order. It was just a question. Questions lead to suffering in some cultures. That's quite enough, Duncan. The trucks go up in the siding near the old army base. It's up the line. Just leave them there. The base is Shanta will handle them. Thank you kindly. Oh, stupid Renee. Hi there. Haven't seen you here before. Ah! I've never seen an engine like you before. <laughs> I know I look a little minimalistic, but when you work on a military base, looks on everything. Oh, you're the shunter. I just came to deliver these trucks. Thank you. Say, what's your name? Stanley. Nice to meet you, Stanley. My name is Fred. You must be busy. Yes. A cargo plane crashed in the mountains. We have to handle the recovery. A plane crash, you say? Yes. It's a shame. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Hope you all get it taken care of. Thank you, Stanley. Take care. Oh great, another annoyance to keep me up all night. I believe we got off on the wrong foot. What's your name? Duncan. And I've had a long day, so good night. Okay, I'm Stanley.
Why, hello there, my good engine. How are you getting acquainted with your new abode? Very well, sir. Thank you for bringing my mirror. Oh, do not thank me. I quite enjoyed the scenic drive. So, have you made any friends yet? I thank one or two, but I haven't really met anyone. That's great to hear! First day on the railway and you're already at home. Well, I will leave this right here and be on my way. Thank you, sir. It means so much. Don't worry, my friend. Oh, and have your controller send you to Fort Olfstead. Millie would love to meet you. Toodaloo! Alright, Stanley. Time to get to work. What kind of engine needs jewelry? That's not good. Not at all. There have been a string of murders lately. Seems there was a serial killer on the loose. Figures. I finally get a new home, and Jack the Ripper buys a nearby cottage. Attention to all Scarlet Lake area residents. Please pay close attention to this is KNN's special news bulletin. In light of recent murders and break-ins, curfew is now in effect. All residents must be in their homes by 8 o'clock p.m. until 6 o'clock a.m. Police and local militia units will be patrolling the streets until the suspect is apprehended. Lock all doors and shutter all windows. May God be with you. Would you be obliged with the brand gun? Did they just say what I think they said? I believe so. What time is it? I think it's about 7. Good thing this was my last stop. I'd rather be bunking with Duncan than camping with a killer. I feel similarly. Have a safe night, Stanley. Same to you. It was good for a first day, but something strange is going on. What is happening? Well, apparently there have been some murders in the nearby towns. To put curfews in place and the army seems to be involved. We are safe now. From the killer, at least. What was that? Nothing. Speak. W well, I was at the station today and a soldier walked up and put a poster with a picture of you on it. I think the army's after you. You run? Nah, it's just best we keep a low profile. Sure, you run around while I stay in a dark corner all day. Hey, the local military base is quite literally just next door. Hello? Heh, <laughs> guess it didn't want to talk. Uh, hi. Were you talking to your mirror? Uh, no. Then why was the mirror talking back? It, it's not a mirror. It's a, a, a tape recorder. Tape recorder, you say? Yes. Sir Normby gave it to me so I could document my time on the railway for a project he's working on. Then why does it look like a mirror? Well, he's royalty, so he can probably afford nice things. That sounds about right. And he wants it to be a surprise, so don't tell anyone. Okay. So who's the surprise for? I don't know. He didn't say. That's fair. <laughs> Maybe they got the sort of git. Maybe so. Well, that was...
was a long night. Here's to a nicer day. Here's hoping for once I get a nice job. I'll be taking a tourist train today. There's supposed to be a beautiful view of the waterfall near the viaduct. The light will reflect off the water and make a beautiful rainbow in the valley. That sounds beautiful. I'm just doing good's work today. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, thank you. Um, if you take the causeway, you get a perfect view of the lake. Thank you, Duncan. I'm looking forward to it. Huh. Maybe that yank ain't so bad after all. Oi, what's going on here? We have a search warrant for missing military property. But why would we have it? We received a tip that it was here. But who could have... Duncan. Good night, Duncan. Oh. Hello, Duncan. Oh, hi Stanley. How's your day been? Interesting to say the least. Say, is anything missing from the shed? Um, I'm not sure. Something reflective, perhaps? Oh, you mean your mirror? Yes, it was gone when I returned. Something tells me that you may know where it is. Oh, bother. I'm sorry, Stanley. Tell me what you did. Well, I thought if I took it I could... Go on. Get you a recording of the Valley Rainbow. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Well, you said that the Earl gave you a video camera for a project he was working on. And when you left I saw it and thought that a video of the Valley Rainbow would be perfect for whatever it was. Ah. Uh. You don't know how much of a relief that is. So where is it? Where is it? Well, that's the tough part. I dropped it off the bridge. What? I'm sorry. I was trying to help. Uh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, Stanley. If there's anything I can do to make it up to you... It, it's fine. I just need some time.
your first week on the railway, Bean Stanley? Eventful. Good to hear. You're in for a real treat tonight. How so? Well, Duncan has been acting up as of late, so to try and talk some sense into him, Duke is going to tell him a story. Duke? Someone say my name? Sorry, no. You look familiar. Have we met? No, we haven't. I'm Stanley. Duke. What has got your smoke box in a frenzy today, Duncan? I'm fed up with those soldiers. Every day more of them show up in trucks. I see them digging foxholes and setting up bloody anti-tank guns. If they're just trying to hunt a killer. It seems like overkill. They don't even look like proper soldiers. Half of their equipment looks 30 years old. Come now, Duncan. The base in the mountain is a training ground. They're probably just bringing in trainees. We need artillery guns for home defense? They were probably bringing them in for storage. We do use those to prevent avalanches in the winter. I still don't like it. It's a waste of resources and a distraction. So is that why you almost came off the viaduct and got dragged up the incline yesterday? That wasn't my fault. There was a rock on the track and a bloody workman forgot to uncouple me from the trucks. I knew someone like you who were only ever had excuses. Is that so? Are you gonna spin me another yarn, Sleeping Beauty? Yes. It started many years ago on the MSR. Back then, there were three engines of the MSR. Myself, John, and Smudger. Smudger never cared for the work he did. He would ride roughly and derailed constantly. I warned him, but he only laughed. Eventually, the manager got so fed up that he took away Smudge's wheels and turned him into a generator. He wasn't laughing then. Eventually, the goods work became too much for me and John to handle, so Stuart and Falcon were bought. Work went smoothly for some years, but then the railway closed. Stuart and Falcon were sold to the aluminium works, and I was shut in the shed. I never found out what happened to John. Before I was closed in, manager told me that Smudger had been sold to a mine and turned into a pumping engine. Apparently, Smudger was still uncaring for the work he did, because soon after, the mine flooded and killed hundreds. He was then dumped into a mine shaft and buried alive alongside his victims. Some say that those who visit the mine on a dark and quiet night will hear his victims' cries of agony and fear accompanied by a laugh filled with evil. Heed my warning, Duncan. I can't say you'll meet the same fate, but carelessness can destroy lives. Oh, blow out your smoke box. I'm not careless. I'm just as... Stanley, are you alright? Just fine. I think it's some bad cold. I'm gonna go have it checked out, don't mind me. Hey, are you okay, Stanley? I'm fine. You sure? You seem more upset than anything. Do you want to talk about it? it? It's just been so long since I have seen anyone. I had been abandoned at my old railway because I didn't run well on the line. And I come here and I meet many new engines and people. And then... And then? And then I run into an engine from my old railway and find out for the past however so many years... He's been telling everyone that I was essentially the spawn of Satan. Wait, you're a smudger? That's awful. Listen, Stanley, I'm sorry I haven't been a better friend. I promise I will make it up to you. Well, at least I can trust Duncan.
Cyrus. Mr. Oliver, where have you been? It's a funny story, Toad. I'll tell you all about it on the way. There. Have you seen a purple tank engine with gold buffers, an open cab, and the word lady written on her side tanks? Yeah, yeah, she was just here with two other engines. Where did she go? She backed out of the yard as soon as she heard you. I might still have time. Thank you. If you see her or anything else suspicious, tell me or Mr. Percival. This be rubbish. How long stone gonna have us sitting in this ditch? As long as we have to. But we already got what we're after. It's of no use to anyone now. What reason could we possibly have to quiet? <laughs> I told you this was a better spot. That's one of our lads. What's he doing? Looks like he's waiting for someone. I say. Time letter base. Gunfire heard at checkpoint Bravo. Moving to engage. Stanley, you heard? No. What happened? They killed the murderer. The curfew's over. That sure is comforting. Do you know who it was? No. Apparently it hasn't been announced yet. Oh well. I guess that does make things somewhat better. I got something that'll make it even better. Now what might that be? A new camera. There was another recorder that Father Crilly didn't want anymore. I figured it would replace yours. Thank you, Duncan. Ah, uh, don't mention it. That's my cue. Bye, Duncan. You have a nice day. Wow. A world away. Is it unusually quiet? I could not tell you. All I hear is chuffing. Stop! I see a light. Who else could be out at this time of night? Hello? Stop! Hey, stop! It's 
the ghost! Take me back, please! Ah, Duncan, calm down. Move smoothly. It would seem that a new hero has arisen. I know you. Yes. You're a smart happy mister. No, only take care of me. <gasps> yeah. You're out of the mirror. I thought you'd been taken. No. When you can drop to me at the bridge, the impact threw me out. I found myself free to go wherever I wanted. So where'd you go? I tried going home. But it was empty. Everyone was gone. I searched, but there was nothing. No movement. No life. No death. Only silence. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but if you want, you can stay here. It's anything but quiet. That's why I came back. You know, you know my name, but I don't know yours. It's Lapis. Lapis Lazuli. Well, would you like to watch the stars with me tonight, Lapis? I would like that. You see any? What are you looking at? Huh. <laughs> Right here! One of the spikes is missing! I'm coming, I'm coming. Whoops! Oh, I dropped my wrench. There it is. Wait. 